This video provides a quick high-level overview of the Lumenzia Basics panel, which comes with Lumenzia, but is installed as a separate panel. If you go up to Window, Extensions, Basics, you'll be able to open it from there. And you can see it's a separate panel, which allows you to flip back and forth between them as you need, or you can move it wherever you want. So for example, we could put Basics underneath the main panel, resize it, and now just have the tools we want always visible, or perhaps make it just a simple button on the side to open when we want the Basics panel. So a lot of flexibility with this design. The general idea behind Basics is it provides easy access for new users to commonly use functions you would use with luminosity masking or occasional access for power users. It also has a few little hidden extras. For example, the Smart Object button not only allows you to create smart objects, but allows you to extract the contents from a smart object, which I'll demonstrate in just a moment. But first, let's just kind of run top to bottom through the panel. The first option here is the ability to undo and redo. If we open up the history in this document, you can see I've already done several things to it. We can simply click undo as many times as you like to go backwards in history or hit redo to go forward as many times as you want. Just provides an easy way to navigate the history states in the document. The zoom out and zoom in functions should be pretty obvious, as well as the fit to screen, which allows you to see the document full screen. The isolation option allows you to view the contents of a layer separate from any masking, any blend if, or layers above. For example, if we click on this layer and we are to click on isolate, we get this temporary visualization on top, which shows just the pixels from this layer without the mask, without the blend if, and without the effect of selective color. Click on isolate again to get rid of it. This function is especially helpful when blending documents which have multiple masked layers to quickly understand the contents of your image. Show Mask does just that. It shows you the layer mask full screen. Click again to return to the image. X will X out the mask, same as shift clicking on it, to temporarily enable or disable the effects of that layer mask. You see the X across the layer mask showing that this mask is currently disabled and otherwise showing you the same result as if it didn't have a mask. We click again to get rid of that. The minus button will use the burn tool set to help you push gray pixels towards black to help refine your masks. The plus tool does the opposite. It will dodge or lighten your gray pixels towards white, or you can paint with pure black, pure white, or middle gray from this row. The next row is all about selection. So if I go and create a selection, let's hit M for the marquee. I have a selection. I can now deselect and reselect with this tool. I'm actually getting rid of the selection. I'm not hiding the ants. I'm actually destroying and recreating this selection. So a quick way to reselect if you don't know the keyboard shortcut for that. Ants will show or hide the marching ants. So in this case, the selection is still here. I cannot see it though when I'm hiding the ants. Invert will flip the selection or the layer mask. In this case, let's flip the selection and you see now we select it outside there. So a very flexible tool to invert whatever you're working on. I'm going to undo that. Clicking on modify will allow us to expand or contract our selection as well as feather it. So for example, we could expand it by 100 pixels and give it a feather of 10 pixels, click OK. And you can see now it's grown as well as the rounding indicating that it's been feathered quite a bit here. And then we have fill. Clicking on this will allow us to use content aware fill or paint white or black within a selection, as well as modify the selection at the same time, which can be a handy way of quickly filling in the interior of a mask with pure white or black. Let's hit escape to cancel that. At any time, if you want to cancel one of these dialogues, just hit the escape key on your keyboard. And let's deselect that. Next up is our clipping group. If we click on this, we turn the active layer into a clipping group. So it will only affect the pixels that are visible in the layer it's clipped to. So we can turn it on or off by clicking on this. Then we have stamp, which will not only help create a clone stamp by clicking on that, we create a stamp of the whole image. I'll delete that. But it also has an additional way of working with Lumenzia. If we go to Lumenzia and create one of the orange preview layers, let's say we click on lights three to get this preview. Well, now with this, we can go to the basics panel, click on stamp, and it will convert that preview into a pixel layer. Some users like to use this as a black and white image, or you could change the blending mode on it to have different effects. For example, we could go and click on something like screen, and now this layer is being used to screen the underlying layer and make some adjustments. Or we could try to click on overlay or soft light, and perhaps we'd like that effect to bring out some more richness in these trees. And now we can just bring down the opacity and it acts as a bit of a filter. So a lot of ways you can convert those black and white previews from Lumenzia into pixel layers by using the stamp button in Lumenzia. Next up is Smart Object, 
which will not only create smart objects, but allow you to extract them. So let's say we want to take these underlying layers and we'll click on smart object to convert them to a smart object. And now once we've done that, we can click on smart object again, and we're given the option to either rasterize and flatten it to pixels or extract by clicking on extract we get back the original layers we had from that smart object. So it allows you to undo a smart object or pull the contents of it back up to this level of the document. Clicking on raw allows you to use the camera raw filter at any time and verticals will help you straighten the image to get straight verticals. For example, we could straighten these trees, not something you'd probably normally do. This is something that would be more useful for architecture, but just for the sake of demonstration here, let's click on stamp to create a new layer on top to adjust and we'll bring out a ruler as a reference. So rulers can be a great way to see what's straight in the document or what's perfect vertical. And let's use that here as a reference. We wanna straighten this tree to this vertical line here. Now when we click on verticals, we'll choose which type of adjustment we want. In this case, we wanna adjust both sides. We'll bring out these trees and these to create a symmetrical adjustment. Click okay. And now we can begin the adjustment. Simply drag from the corner out in order to straighten this tree and we can see that blue line now, that guide, is very handy to see when we've straightened that tree. When you're done, you can simply hit enter or click the check up above. And you can see we now have a nice straight tree and those guides have gone away versus the previous image. So you can see that's a nice way to straighten out lines in your image with a very clear reference. Lastly, you've already seen that these buttons below allow you to adjust the blend mode as you click on these. Let's take a look, for example, again here at soft light. If we click on some of the different modes, we could go click on, for example, luminosity to see the luminosity effect. And if we click it again, it will change from luminosity blend mode to normal. So you can click any of the blend modes a couple times to toggle between that blend mode and normal. So that's a quick overview of Lumenzia Basics. Be sure to also check out the written manual for Lumenzia Basics that comes with it in the zip download, or click on the tutorials button in the panel at any time to access this video again.